The Cardinals bounced back in game two of their doubleheader yesterday against the Cubs. We'll break down all the fun the offense had, including a lame move by Chicago manager David Ross. As Jake Woodford's performance last night warned a spot in the rotation over Dakota Hudson now. Plus, a look at some of the top stories from around the league that pertain to the Cardinals' playoff chances. All on today's episode of Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm J.D. Haffern. I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou, lifetime Cardinals fan, and I am your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio. Follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. You can subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcast, on YouTube, obviously. Be sure to like and subscribe and comment. Very, very important if you are on YouTube, which I very much appreciate as well. Uh, make sure you are clicking the like button. You're clicking the subscribe button. Uh, if you're your first time coming to YouTube and checking us out, we appreciate you. Make sure you subscribe and everything. We are almost at 1,500 subscribers, which is great considering where we were just a month ago. Things are growing. Things are going nicely. I'm sure it has nothing to do with me, but more with the fact that the Cardinals are winning ball games. But still, uh, it, it helps the channel grow. The more that you like it, it uh, gets more views for everybody who might be looking up uh, Cardinals info, trying to find cool stuff. So um, help them find us. Help them find Locked on Cardinals. So uh, do that on YouTube. Once again, it's a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Now, it was a long day at the ballpark for the Cardinals yesterday as they played a doubleheader against the Cubs. Game one, straight up boring. All right, if you missed our video yesterday about that or you missed the podcast yesterday, not an exciting game. The players looked bored. Both sides really looked bored in that one. Uh, Adam Wainwright gave a strong effort, battle control issues, but the Cardinals offense, they pulled the copper field. They just, just vanished. Uh, in fact, if you count Monday night, when they only scored one run on Albert's blast, the uh, Cardinals only scored one run in 18 innings since coming to Chicago. That's not good. It's not going to get it done, which I mentioned in yesterday's show was a bit odd considering that Wrigley Field is known as the hitter's ballpark. So uh, very strange that neither team putting up any runs. Uh, not like the Cubs are lighting the world on fire either. They scored just two runs in that same time span. But let's be honest, the Cubs offense compared to the Cardinals offense, kind of like comparing the NFL and the XFL. All right, same sport, same field, totally different levels of skill involved there. Got to give a shout out to Wainwright. Uh, despite him throwing six innings and allowing just two runs, the Cardinals end up falling two to nothing and uh, get shut out for the 12th time this season. After the lackluster game, I don't think anyone was quite ready to hit the panic button, though. Teams falling in and out of ruts throughout the season all the time at the plate. Uh, the Cardinals had just smacked around the Rockies and the Diamondbacks last week. So two games with little to no offense, isn't something that I was ready to freak out about. Um, and judging by the reactions of Cardinal fans online, you felt the same way. It sucks to lose, really sucks to lose to the Cubs. But everybody took a deep breath, wanted to see what happens in game two. And boy, oh boy, were things a bit different. It didn't happen right away, though. In fact, the Cardinals were held scoreless for the first three innings, which ran their scoreless streak to 14 straight. I think a lot of us were looking around like like Kevin Bacon in the movie Tremors, which is one of those really good, awful movies. You know the ones that I'm talking about, which are just crap. But at the same time, you love them. But in that movie, Kevin Bacon has that one scene where he's like, what the hell is going on? I mean, what the hell is going on? I feel like that's where we were yesterday against the Cubs when there was no hitting going on whatsoever. But finally, top of the fourth. They break through. Nolan Arnato launches one into the night in left field. His 26th tater of the year gives the Cardinals a one or nothing lead. And you can almost feel like the, the whole dugout just kind of had a giant, ah, like a sigh of relief. Like, okay, pressure's off. Let's get to ripping and ripping. They did. Next up, you had Nolan Gorman. Another nice at bad for the rookie. Works a full count. Singles to center. And then it's my man, 
Tyler O'Neill, who had numbered since August 14th. But, you know, it can happen at any moment with his power because he works out a lot. And Bro Neal makes an appearance and sends a hanging 1-0 slider, hits a freaking missile over the wall and left. And uh, it, it went out like in a, in a blink. Like it was phew, like I'm surprised the cameraman even caught up with it. 108.8 exit velo on the home run is eighth of the season. All of a sudden, it's three to nothing Cardinals and things are clicking. Doesn't in there, though. Corey Dickerson singles. Andrew Kisner singles. And that sends Adrian Sampson to the showers. He was the starter for the Cubs last night. Take care now. Bye-bye then. Uh, Nicholas Padilla comes in next. Edmund flies out, but then Newt works another walk. Show some love to Newt, man. 11 walks in his last 35 plate appearances with an on-base percentage of 571. I love this dude. I love him. I think Cardinals Nation loves him. I think the, the clubhouse loves him. He's really kind of stepped into where Bader was kind of that energy guy for the team. Now it's Lars Newtbar. He's getting on base. He's making things happen, and it, it's fun to watch. Uh, that brings in Brennan Donovan, another OBP machine. He singles down the first baseline, scoring two. It's now five to nothing. Donovan in his last 19 plate appearances, batting 529 OBP, 579. And at this point, Newton Donovan need to be hitting one and two in the lineup at all times against right-handed pitchers. There's no excuse for them not to be in there anymore, barring some sort of injury. Put to Young on the bench, Edmund go over to short, Gorman at second, Newton right, Donovan, you can DH him or some combination of all of that, but make sure this is happening because those two guys at the top of the order, they're feasting on right-handers right now. They take great at bats. They're not afraid to walk which a lot of people expand the zone. That's one problem I have with Dylan Carlson is that he he chases things too often where he could be taking walks and steadies. He wants to do something, you know, he, wa he wants to make things happen. And I understand that, but at the same time, walks as good as a hit. Just get on base, man. That's all we're asking for you. And Donovan and Newpar are doing that. They're getting on base in front of the sluggers and it, it just gets the whole offense moving. So top of the fifth, we go uh, Nolan Gorman. He works another walk. Gorman really starting to find his eye at the plate. I'm loving what I'm seeing out of Nolan. Uh, O'Neal grounds out, moves him to second. He gets to third on a wild pitch. Corey Dickerson lines a 3-2 double into left center, making it 6 to nothing. And you heard Danny Mack talking about uh, the swings that Dickerson is taking lately. And I, I pointed this out. The first game he had when he came back from the DL, I, I noticed that he was just letting it fly. Like, he is swinging hard. Like it's not, it's not like he's just trying to put the bat on the ball. Like he's taking a mighty vicious cut up there and he's doing it early in the count and it's paying off. He's been an entirely different hitter ever since he came back from the DL. He's hitting 378 over his last 38 plate appearances and 390 since the all-star break, as opposed to before the break, he was hitting 202 and people like myself were like, get him out of here. I knew that wasn't going to happen because they're paying him $5 million, but we were tired of seeing him just look awful at the plate. He's really turned things around. So uh, kudos to uh, Corey Dickerson. Top of the six, Tommy Edmond leads off. He hits a blast to left center, his ninth of the year at seven and nothing. Meanwhile, Jake Woodford throwing a doozy of a game gives away to Chris Stratton. Damn glad to meet you in the sixth inning after allowing a run. Stratton throws a scoreless inning and Danny and Brad Thompson brought up some adjustments that Stratton had made something either pitching coach Mike Maddox picked up on or something maybe his new teammates helped him out with because they're all really good at communicating and uh, finding things to help their teammates out. But he's been pretty sturdy, quite sturdy. Um, coming out of the bullpen recently, hasn't been scored upon in his last three outings, and that's what you need out of him, you know? Uh, Matthew Liberatore, he gets in the game in the seventh. He strikes out the first two he sees, looks fantastic. Bottom of the eighth, things get a bit shaky with two outs and a runner on first. He gives up a single, and then a wild pitch, scores a run. Then uh, Fran Mil Reyes bloops a double into right, scoring another run, making it seven to three. Um, Libby just missing his spots there, really plain and simple. Wasn't anything wrong with the stuff he was throwing up there. He was just missing a few inches here and there, and the you know, big league hitters are going to take advantage of that. Uh, that takes us to the ninth inning where the Cardinals are fed up with the Cubs, and they go – KGB style from the movie Rounders. If you haven't seen it with Matt Damon in it, fantastic flick, especially if you like uh, card movies about uh, poker. Um, KGB and that one, no more tonight. Not tonight. He, get, he gets all worked up in that one. It's a fantastic scene. Uh, John Malkovich plays KGB. Got to check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Anyway, Gorman walks again. O'Neill walks. Dickerson singles. Bases juice. Kisner walks. 
forces in a run. It's eight to three. Edmund goes up and almost hits his second dinger of the game. It's a double two run score. 10 to three for sure. Major League Baseball had Tommy two bags peeing in a cup after the game, checking him for PEDs with back to back power displays like that. Uh, Carlson drives one into left center for a two run triple, makes it 12 to three. And as all of this is unfolding, the crowd is beginning to chant. We won Albert. We won Albert. The Cardinal bench starts getting in on this as well. Okay. And that's when the machine emerges out of the dugout. Like a, like a dove coming out of flames or something. He, he emerges, got his helmet on crowds going wild. <sighs> Who holds is going to come up facing another lefty that he hasn't homered off of yet in his career. So he could break Barry Bonds, record. He's pushing towards 700 fans are ready. I'm ready. The broadcast booth is ready. We're all stoked. And then Cubs manager, David Ross, instead, like a weasel, pulls the rug out from underneath of all of us and brings in his designated hitter, Franmil Frickin Reyes. Are you kidding me, David Ross? Like, what an absolute coward move. And just ruining it for all of the fans, not only in attendance at Wrigley Field that night to watch your crap team, but also the the thousands and thousands who are watching at home just looking for an Albert at bat and you take it away from them like that and you get Reyes you bring in Reyes which I get Albert hit a home run off a position player earlier this season in Pittsburgh so it's not like these guys are usually very good they lob it up there maybe Albert hits one I, I understand that point of it but Reyes comes in and, and he thinks he's a real pitcher he throws two in at 82 miles an hour at the top of the zone for strikes Albert's like, okay, uh, all right, what do we do here? I guess I guess we're, we're going at it, dude. Um, and then the turd tries to break off a curveball, and he hits Albert. It plunks him. Albert goes to, goes to first base. So disappointing. I hope David Ross stepped on a Lego while barefoot when he got home later that night. Brutal. Uh, Goldie swings at the first pitch because he's over this nonsense, which comes in at 86 miles an hour. Like, what's Reyes doing? Anyway, grounds into a double play, but another run scores 13 to three. Then DeYoung strikes out looking on high heat in the inning. Uh, but what an inning for the Cardinals. They blow it open. They go on to win at 13 to three. That coupled with the Dodgers whooping up on the Brewers gives the Cardinals a five and a half game lead in the NL Central. Lots of offense. Arenado three for four solo home run. O'Neill two for four with a dinger and two runs scored. Dickerson, four for five, two runs in RBI. Edmund, two for five, home run, three ribbies, two runs scored. Gorman, one for three, but walks twice, three runs scored. Donovan, two ribbies. Carlson, two ribbies. It was a lot of fun. Way more fun in game two than we had in game one, that is for sure. Uh, Pitching-wise, Jake Woodford, spectacular. We're going to talk more about his effort next and whether or not he should be taking over that fifth spot in the rotation currently held by Dakota Hudson. So we'll get to that next. First, though, let's talk about something that's pretty serious, okay? Let's bring down the lights just a little bit. Imagine yourself hanging out with friends, and you're putting back a few drinks. You're having a good time. You're watching the Cardinal game, and you're like, yeah, poo holes, or woo, I love Tyler O'Neal, whoever you're rooting for. A few drinks becomes a few too many, and as the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think of calling for a ride, but nah, you live nearby, you can make it home okay, it's no big deal. What are the odds you're going to get pulled over anyway, right? And even so, what's the worst thing that can happen? What, your insurance is going up? That's no big deal. Eh, you lose your license. Eh, that sucks. What about losing your job? How about you total your car? That's expensive. Even worse, you hurt yourself or you kill someone. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe. Plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. So last night in game two, Jake Woodford got the ball and did an excellent job. I mean, nothing really bad to say about what he did. Gave his team a chance to win. Final line on the night, five and a third, one run, 
four hits, one walk, one strikeout, gets his third win of the season. On the season now, Woodford's numbers look like this, 3-0 and with an ERA of 2.48. That's pretty good. Uh, his whip, which is uh, walk hits per innings pitch, for those of you unfamiliar, still a little be- to be desired, uh, 1.138. Last night's game was his first start of the season at the major league level, but he does have 14 appearances overall. At Memphis, though, where he spent most of the season, he was a starter. Ten starts, to be exact. Two and three record, which you don't really care about because records, just in general, don't really show how good a pitcher or how bad a pitcher you really are. So two and three down in Memphis, his ERA 3.14. See what I mean? Like, Somebody with that ERA at at AAA should have a much higher record, but they they don't. Uh, His whip, it's even worse down at Memphis, 1.349. Now, has what he's shown you at Memphis, what he's done out of the bullpen this year and limited action for the Cardinals, and then last night's performance, is that enough for him to earn a spot in the rotation? Do you think he should have a spot in the rotation now? Or should he at least get the starts until Jack Flaherty or Steven Matz returns? Whichever happens first, it looks like Jack Flaherty will be back far before uh, Matz is able to. But um, that's the question that, that I'm posing to you right now. So let me know in the comment section down below on YouTube what you guys think, because many fans are frustrated with the fact that Dakota Hudson continues to get starts in the fifth spot. And they got a good reason to feel that way. I'm As I mentioned yesterday, I'm frustrated. Hudson's frustrated. So is the the management, the pitching staff, everybody. Everybody's worked up about this because we know how good Hudson can be. Uh, he was recently skipped for a start in order to address his control issues against left-handed hitters. But he is scheduled to start Thursday's series finale against the Cubs. Now, since July 30th, Hudson has had four starts, and he hasn't gone very long in any of them. He went four and a third against Washington, four versus the Yankees, five against Colorado, and then four and a third against Arizona. So if you add it all up, 70, 17 and two-thirds innings, 11 runs, 20 hits, he's walked 11, and struck out 13. That's not good. That's just not good. On the season, Hudson is 6-6 six and six with a 4.33 ERA, and only six of his 22 outings have been quality starts. Granted, he's coming back from Tommy John's surgery, so I, I get that. I understand that. And he has flash moments of being a solid starter. He had six shutout innings against Philadelphia back in July. Seven innings of one uh, one run ball uh, against the Padres and the Tampa Bay Rays in June. They were back to back starts. They were really really good, but more times than not, he's putting the team in a hole that they got to climb out of. And at this point in the season, can you really continue to put him out there? A lot of people say no. A lot of people say no. Um, as I mentioned, he's going to get the start on Thursday after last night's game. Uh, Ollie was asked about it, and according to MLB.com's John Denton. He said, not right now. I'd like to see Hudson pitch on Thursday. I think we're at a point where we have out if Woodford has staying power. Again, in Denton's article, Marmol says the the Woodford-Hudson debate will move closer to the forefront of his thinking, especially with Hudson set to make a start with his job potentially on the line. Marmol wants to see Hudson embrace the challenge and enjoy the success he's had in the past. This is another quote from Ali. That's what this sport is, competition. And you either do it or you don't. There's always somebody else who wants to take your job. They do it similar, but it's different in how they get ground balls. Talking about the difference between Hudson and Woodford, who's also a sinker ball pitcher. Now, one way to look at this is the team is giving Hudson way too long of a leash. It's hurting the team, putting them uh, again in a hole that they got to continuously climb out of, and then you got to have the bullpen save them. Then on the other side, you got to remember, you're, you're giving a young pitcher who's coming back from a very tough injury a chance to earn his spot. Since July, the Cardinals are 2-5 and five in games that Dakota Hudson has started, but in August, they're 2-1. and one. Personally, I am ready for a change. <laughs> I, I'm kind of over the Hudson thing. They clearly want Palante in the bullpen, which is somebody people will inevitably, inevitably bring up as well. Palante should be starting. They like him in the bullpen. He throws strikes. He's doing great there. They don't want to keep moving him back and forth. So I get it. So if Hudson struggles on Thursday, I I think that's going to be it. Uh, you got to remember again, Flaherty could be activated soon as the series in since as soon as the uh, series in Cincinnati, which is coming up next week, or possibly September second. So uh, barring any setbacks, this 
probably won't matter all that often anyway, uh, because uh, he's just, there's not going to be that many opportunities for him to start anymore anyhow. Um, if Flaherty comes back up, he's going to get the spot. They've already said that. They, they're they're going to start him. He's not going to be a bullpen guy. So you'd be set. You'd have Michaelis, Wainwright, Montgomery, Quintana, and then Flaherty. And that's it. So, um, so like I said, it probably won't matter soon anyway what Dakota Hudson does, but it's what Cardinals fans are talking about. So those are the numbers. Feel free to debate down below in the comments section on our YouTube page. Hit us up on, on our Twitter pages as well. Uh, up next, we're going to run down the top stories in baseball, including one former MVP who is set to return for a playoff contender in the National League. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. You can find reviews and news of every league including Major League Baseball. I mean, you really want to make the Cardinals games fun and stressful at the same time? Put some money on uh, on the baseball games and, uh, and see how that works out for you because uh, it can be a lot of fun when you win, and it's tough when you see the Cardinals, like, you know, Liberatory yesterday. He starts giving up runs. You're like, no, stop it. I got money on this. Um, in the end, they did fine. But uh, NFL, obviously, people love betting on NFL games. Preseason still going on. NBA, you got NHL, combat sports, esports, even golf. Bet online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in game betting scores and podcasts. They've got you covered. Head to Bet Online today, or you can use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Bet online where the game starts. So the new power rankings this week saw the Cardinals jump from number eight to number five. We had just talked uh, about it recently. Were they being disrespected, being all the way back at number eight? Well, they scooched them up. They're up to number five. They trailed the Dodgers, Mets, Astros, and Braves, and that's it. Uh, by the way, Braves, they're going to be playing the Cardinals. They got a series this weekend at Bush Stadium, which is really going to be a good test on whether or not the Cardinals do belong with the big boys or not. That's going to be the test because Atlanta, oh, they're really good. Uh, Yankees, Phillies, and Padres all fall behind the Cardinals this week. Uh, the Yankees have fallen on tough times in August, but they've won three in a row. They've got uh, Giancarlo Stanton expected back in the lineup on Thursday, so things are looking up for New York. Uh, I know <laughs> good people in the Bronx freaking out there for a little while. Uh, Padres, they got the whole Tatis Jr. suspension fiasco happening, and Juan Soto he got scratched from the Padres starting lineup on Tuesday night after his back locked up on him while he was taking pregame batting practice. Uh, apparently he tried swinging in the cage again during the game in case he had to pinch it and um, just, just couldn't get through. It. It's bothering him. So from what I read, they're going to give him a couple days off. See, it'll, it'll help out. But I mean, that's the last thing you want when you trade all those pieces for Juan Soto. And now, now he's dealing with back issues. That's not good. Uh, the Padres, they haven't been good either. They've lost six of their last 10 and are a game and a half up on the Brewers for the final wild card spot. Speaking of the Brewers, the Dodgers lit up their ace Corbin Burns last night. Seven runs on six hits in just uh, three and two-thirds innings of work. Uh, Three-run shot by Trace Thompson was the big blow. Tony Gonsolin of the Dodgers. Have you seen his numbers recently? After the win last night over the Brewers, he's now 16-1 and one on the season. His ERA is at 2.10. So basically, he's got the Cy Young wrapped up in the National League, right? Uh, remember the Cardinals? They had him beat, too, in July, and then they blew that game. Like, they were way up on him, and then just a meltdown in the last few innings and end up losing that game to the Dodgers. But the only team to actually beat Gonsolin this year, anybody know? Oddly enough, the Washington Nationals, who are awful. <laughs> they have the worst record in baseball, yet they're the only team that has successfully defeated Tony Gonsolin of the Los Angeles Dodgers this year. Go figure. And uh, how about the Phillies? They've won two in a row, but are just five and five in their last 10. But we'll be getting reigning MVP Bryce Harper back in their lineup soon. Harper slugged two dingers on Tuesday night for their AAA affiliate. That was his first look at live pitching in almost two months. And he crushed one to right and then hit a patented Bryce Harper opposite field home run later in the game. The Phillies have been without him since June 25th when he broke his thumb. The plan was to let him play through this weekend at AAA before being activated for next week. But 
I don't know. He's feeling good. He can be activated as early as Thursday. So uh, we'll see what the Phillies do. But there's a look around the league at uh, some of the teams that the, the Cardinals are competing for and against uh, here in the National League. And, you know, just giving you a heads up of what's going on with the Yankees because it's been a weird turn of events after the start of the season they had and then their struggles in August. So starting to get things figured out again. Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen. Now make your second listen to Locked on MLB podcast. MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast, Locked on MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. Reminder, too, uh, be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. I would appreciate that greatly. We're trying to get to 1,500. We were like 10 subscribers short. When I started recording this. So if we can get to 1500 today, that would be awesome. You guys would rock, even though you rock already. Uh, be sure to follow on Twitter at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Uh, we're going to do a sound off mailbag segment tomorrow. Uh, that went really well last week. I, I appreciate all the input and the questions. So if you guys got those, make sure you send them my way uh, again on Twitter. Or you can give it to me on uh, YouTube in the uh, comment section. And uh, we'll get it all set up there too. But you guys always have some good questions, man. You, you see, you guys are you guys are smart. You guys are some smart cookies out there. All right, uh, Cardinals playing again tonight in Chicago. Uh, we have got one Miles Michaelis set to pitch for the Redbirds, and let's see who's it going to be for the Cubbies. Luke Farrell. It'll be Luke Farrell on the mound for the Cubbies, uh, right-hander. So probably no Albert in the lineup tonight. So you get all the left-handers, but uh, we'll see what happens. I don't know. Uh, first pitch is set to be at 7.05 St. Louis time. So uh, make sure you guys tune in. And uh, if you want to chat while the game's going on, you can do that with me on Twitter. We were doing it again uh, during the doubleheader yesterday. I love the interaction between uh, all of you guys and me. It's a, it's a lot of fun to be a part of that. So uh, let's get to that again tonight. Let's bring home another winner. You're the best fans of baseball for a reason. And I'll see you next time right here on Locked On Cardinals.